Hello, this is Dawn Richardson, and today is the winter solstice 2019, December 21st here, um, I'm in the United States. And um, so we're headed into Christmas and then a really impactful week ahead. Um, and I'm actually gonna be recording a couple of videos today. And um, my idea was to start with um, some of the other videos, but this one, is the one that spirit definitely wants me to record first and so i will i will just say it's the one that intimidates me the most i am if it were up to me i'm not sure that i would be recording this today just in all full transparency but i've been shown that it's time and so here i am <laughs> so um this um what I'm going to be doing is actually just sharing a little bit of a story, um, you know, from my heart and soul with you um, that pertains to some events that happened long ago. And I've shared a little bit about this in the past, um, but I'm just going to dive in. We'll see how it comes out. I have no particular plan or agenda, and actually I didn't even know I would be discussing this until um, yesterday, last night. Um, so. I have no preparation here. I'm just going to kind of tell you a little story um, and we're going to call it a dragon's tale. A little background. Um, the story has lived inside me forever as long as I've been alive here um, in this life anyway and perhaps much longer than that. And it's one that back in, um, I think it was 2000. 13 or 14 perhaps um, I spirit brought to my attention in a number of ways um, that I was meant to share this which again is quite intimidating <laughs> I have been a person who has um, not been understood in at various junctures of my life and have, has been you know kind of labeled as you know too far out there crazy other you know sorts of labels that have been put uh, attached to me and I, I have to say I have not even understood myself many times um, not just in terms of the story I'll be sharing with you but other things as well it's just the way I'm wired and I have come to a piece about that and yet at the same time um, there's always a bit of trepidation right when I do anything or speak anything which is at all you know and I, I've done that quite a bit in the last several years but this particular story is one that um, will perhaps be polarizing and certainly not understood or accepted by many so here goes that's the background um I I have um, what I was going to say is that back in 2013 or 14, one of the ways that, that this was brought to my attention that I was meant to share this was um, I was connected um, to two separate people from two very different circumstances, um, both of whom shared with me, one in sort of the context of an intentional, um, intuitive conversation between myself and this person, and the second in a very random way that was just you know you couldn't make it up um but both people um shared with me that they were shown that i was meant to to share or to write in one case a story about a dragon's tale which had incredible neither would have known but this had incredible meaning to me and touched you know like my very core in terms of um, emotionally and also in terms of just you know kind of a healing that I needed and I've always known I was meant to share that and so and for me these um, this dragon's tail reference was connected to memories that I've always had of, of the person I call Magda who is Mary Magdalene and her story her untold story um, or at least I have not seen it told the way that I I have carried in my heart and soul the memories of it and I've shared some about that in previous um, videos and certainly most recently through my art because this was so that was back in 2013 or 14 when I was told I was meant to share it and I did start you know preparing to write a screenplay version or a novel version or something but for various reasons that was 
that hasn't taken off yet. Um, partially because I backed away from it and partially because there was a lot of interference and negative, um, well, what I call negative anyway, there was a lot of attempts, there were many attempts to derail that. And at the time, maybe I didn't understand <laughs> that it wasn't actually, um, you know, personal attempts, that there was a coordinated, orchestrated effort. Um, I do now, and I just haven't gotten back to it. So I have not written anything with regard to that to this point, other than, you know, little snippets here and there. But I did um, last year, Spirit, uh, actually it was the summer of 2018, so a little more than a year ago. Something beautiful and absolutely mind-blowingly epic to me and my soul and for my soul self uh, happened and it had to do with um, an encounter that I, you know, um, a person that uh, that I was um, led to. It was not by accident, um, and it opened up everything in a beautiful way. And so, I last um, the summer of 2018. That summer, I just had to get it out, and so I painted. Um, and so you can see the Magda paintings. Um, or at least one series of them um, on my Dawn Richardson Art website. And that's where you can read um, some of the story. I may share that as a part of the sharing or I may just leave that um, separate. Um, but let me, I just only have, you know, 20 or 30 minutes right now. So let me get into the story. Um, so A Dragon's Tale. Uh, the Book of Revelation. Um, has a um, chapter 12 actually talks about the woman and the dragon and uh, this is a passage that um, is meaningful to me on several levels one of which I'm about to share with you here you know when I was growing up I grew up um, very immersed in Christianity of course Yeshua Jesus the person he was with me from the beginning of this life and I write about that in my uh, memoir of my long healing journey um, journey to sacred wholeness and how he was always with me or the parts of me um, within and um, so it was always it was always the larger than life um, the 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 light of Christ and the, and the person of Jesus that lived within me and it was bigger than anything here anything practical ever was it didn't actually the practical world still to this day it's like what are we what is this about um, it's a mystery to me I don't get it it feels like a very like tiny little sliver of something and it just doesn't feel as real um, as the the truth that I have always had inside and so when I was growing up I grew up in this very um, traditional religious um, uh, environment um, and Christianity was alive for me I remember the church the roots the true the true church the true vine um, and I for the most part wanted very much to fit into that world and it's when it's been taken from me a, new, a number of times both in terms of you know um, being asked to leave a church, but before that, um, even, you know, some um, places where the larger um, reality that I knew, and I wanted to bring them together, right? That larger story and and this world of um, the church and the truest part of that. But when it's been taken from me, it's been difficult for me. And so when I was growing up, though, I was very much trying to, you know, really like take the best parts of that and, and contribute to that and receive from it. And uh, it didn't always go so well. But when I was growing up, there was sort of a, an attempt um, by many, there was like conversation and a debate um, around revelation and what did it mean? And there were like these three options. And I went to seminary later when I was in my 20s. And it was interesting to watch that. Like there were these options of it's either this or this or this. And the, you know, the, you know, I'm not even gonna go into the names, but there, you know, there were three major views and, and interpretations. And I always thought, wow, it's so interesting that these people are like battling over this. It's such a like, it's, it's not even the question. It's not even the right question. And so these views, you know, which by the way, these three major views to me always left out the one that or one that was most important to me anyway, and the one that is valid and an untold story in the history of humanity. 
and that did have to do with the the, the person um, of Mary Magdalene and, and what all that unfolded after the crucifixion and, and the resurrection uh, of Yeshua ben Joseph, Jesus, the Christ. And this untold story, you know, sort of was like, I don't understand why nobody else is not talking about this. <laughs> so so uh, thus this share, I'm sure. <clears throat> and so after the, the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus, there was this, you know, for lack of a better term, a hijacking of the story of, of that one love that Jesus the Christ embodied when he was here on earth. And it was the taking of that story and that, that fullness um, of his fulfillment of the law of love, which by the way is why many of us are here now to, to further, um, to further uh, be the manifestation of that one love here in this new earth that we are co-creating. But there was this you know, sort of hijacking of his story that has, it, it was made into a thing that has been used for centuries. Um, in some cases, deliberately for personal gain, uh, consciously, and then, um, and, and that often is for the profit of a few, a select group and or individuals. And it's, it's a clear, you know, and kind of egregious act of a willfulness, right? But then it's also, the story itself and the fullness of it has also been siphoned off and, and, in, and used, in some cases unknowingly, by the unconscious collusion of the masses. And, and why has that happened? Because there is a true longing for that one love and a return home to unity and that desire in the heart of humanity and in, in the hearts and souls of so many has been manipulated. And it is the story, that one love, that, that light, that light, and that life that existed in the person of Jesus Christ has been it's been, again, kind of co-opted and used in some cases by religion and the church at large um, in terms of the Christ, you know, Christian narrative anyway, but also in many, many other ways because it is one light, right? It's not just Christianity. It is one light. The person of Jesus, the Christ, came to embody the one light for all not just for those on a narrow path uh, or a, a particular expression of that. It was for all expressions of that one light um, that he came to elevate and raise up the possibilities for us all. Okay, so let me get back to the dragon story, right? A dragon's tail, that's what this is all about. So, so I just wanted to give that context that the story overall of who Jesus was and who those who walked with him in those early days, who walked in the way of wholeness um, and who sought to be an embodiment of that, of that uh, one light and that life and that love that he modeled so beautifully for us. And I've always said it was about Jesus' life, not his death. That's the story. The story is his life, that life that he came to, to be and to bear. And, and Mary Magdalene, Magda, who walked with him, also sought to bring her own unique expression of that light and life and love forward. And so um, there were many forces at work against that. Of course, we know the story of the crucifixion of Jesus, and and we know the legends that have been shared. You know, some of which I resonate with, and some of which I don't. Um, but that's that's really beside the point because there, I really actually believe there are many of us here right now in our time who carry th threads um, of the story, and it, it's a much larger story than I know, or than than you know others who share know. And you know, again, some of it. It's, it's one tapestry of timeless truth that we are weaving together, and that goes for the whole story of humanity. I'm sorry if this is coming out a little jumbled. Um, let me go ahead and read um, Revelation um, chapter 12, but again, keep in mind that this has been interpreted in, in, in so many, a variety of ways, and I guess what I want to say there is, is, you know, it's not about arguing about which view is correct. It is 
It is a metaphor. This story and the whole book of Revelation is a metaphor. And that metaphor, it works on many levels, okay? It does work in terms of the historical narrative and what was happening in Rome in that in you know those days after the the death um, of Jesus and and his resurrection and what was happening in history, you know, why you know, right with all the the emperors in Rome and and the uh, also the um, some of the stories that we do know and some that we don't in terms of what happened in the early church. So yes, there is a historical truth to it. And yes, it is, you know, a future time um, that it's talking about, or at least when it was written. And yes, it is also um, a, a metaphor that works actually for the unfolding of what's happening in our time as we move uh, into, you know, a again, a higher elevation, um, a raising of that light of truth um, that Jesus came to bear. So Revelation is a metaphor that works on many levels, and one of the levels it works on is the, the untold story um, of Magdalene. Let me read this. The woman and the dragon is what it's often referred to, and this is from Revelation chapter 12. A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of 12 stars on her head. She was pregnant and cried out in pain as she was about to give birth. Then another sign appeared in heaven, an enormous red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns on its heads. Its tail swept a third of the stars out of the sky and flung them to earth. The dragon stood in front of the woman who was about to give birth so that it might devour her child the moment it was born. She gave birth to a son, a male child who will rule all the nations with an iron scepter. And her child was snatched up to God and to his throne. The woman fled into the wilderness to a place prepared for her by God where she might be taken care of for 1,260 days. Then war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back, but he was not strong enough and they lost their place in heaven. The great dragon was hurled down, the ancient, that ancient serpent called the devil or Satan who leads the whole world astray. He was hurled to the earth and his angels with him. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, now has come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accuses them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw that he had been hurled to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. The woman was given the, the two wings of a great eagle, so that she might fly to the place prepared for her in the wilderness, where she would be taken care of for a time, time and half a time, out of the serpent's reach. Then from his mouth the serpent spewed water like a river to overtake the woman and sweep her away with his torrent. But the earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring, those who keep God's commands and hold fast to their testimony about Jesus. So this is the story that has unfolded in 2000 years. And again, it is a metaphor and it works on many levels. Yes, many interpretations point to this woman clothed by the sun and the, with the 12 stars and the crown as um, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And yes, it is, it is this. And, and it is also uh, a story that unfolded in a specific time, right after the, the, the uh, death and resurrection of Jesus with Magda um, in the south of France and the child that she bore and raised there for 12 years. And he was swallowed by this river that ran out, that the dragon spewed forth. Um, and it works again on a higher level in terms of the, the, um, the evil or darkness, if you would call it that, that was upon the earth. And it also works in terms of the, the events that unfolded. And that, for that, you can look at my 
um, painting series in the descriptions there. I'll leave a link below if I share this publicly um, so that you can, you know, find those and read them for yourselves. Um, and it also works on, in terms of what's unfolding in, in our time, in our history right now, because as it says, let me get back to that and give me just a moment. I just closed it, but let me open that back up. Um, here you go. So the serpent spewed out water like a river to overtake the woman. If you think of the woman as us all, the embodiment of that light of Christ here, you know, there have been times when what was cast down to earth has been allowed to run rampant and to swallow up all that we, um, those of us who do keep God's commands and hold fast to our testimony about Jesus the Christ and seek to be an embodiment of the light and the life and the love he was and to to be our own expression of the, the light of that truth here. There, there certainly has been, you know, so again, it works on that larger level of what's been happening in our time here and what happened, you know, in the time when Jesus came into the world and he is always coming into the world. Um, I always refer back to that first chapter of the Gospel of John. So, so read that and know that um, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. And that light is always coming into the world and it comes into the world through us. And that is who we are and why we have come to be. And so that dragon was enraged. That dragon, that darkness was enraged. It, and, it, and it unleashed its fury in a myriad of ways. It unleashed its fury when it worked through the hearts of those, you know, whose initial um, perhaps intentions for good were then thwarted and were overtaken within the hearts of, of in individuals and that fury was unleashed in, in, a, in a river turned to blood and in the loss of the life of the child of Yeshua and Magda it was also unleashed that fury it's been it's been unleashed in our time through so many ways and we've seen that being revealed more and more and more here in in these years as we make this great turn into um into the the transition into um a new earth a new heaven and a new earth that are going to be united and brought back into union as they were always intended to be and that happens again from within our hearts first but that dragon's fury it has been unleashed in so many ways. It was unleashed when Jesus came into the world. And sorry about the, the chime in the background. And it was unleashed um, again in that historical, um, the soul memories that I carry about Magda. And it was unleashed, um, you know, throughout history, throughout these 2000 years and, and, and uh, actually going back in time, you know, since the, since the dragon was hurled down to earth. And then again, um, in, in our time, it's, it's, it's obvious how that's happening. But the earth, the earth helped the woman in the story. So again, think of the metaphor, the larger metaphor. The earth helped the woman by opening its mouth and swallowing the river that the dragon had spewed forth. And there, and that therefore, in, you know, this battle ensued on earth. And there has been a war, but it's a spiritual, it's spiritual warfare. As, as above, so below. It was waged in heaven, it was waged on earth. And so this, um, this invitation of this chapter though is to rejoice. It's to rejoice. Now has come, have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah for the accuser of our brothers and sisters who accused them before our God day and night has been hurled down. They triumphed over him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. They did not love their lives so much as to shrink from death. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell in them. Rejoice. And now, at last, we can rejoice here on earth because this is a time where that woman clothed with the sun 